guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Francois, your favorite American expat living in Seoul, South Korea. But today I am not in Seoul, I am in Dongducheon. I am at a place called Nijimori Studio. This is an all Japanese village, traditional village, set up here in the countryside, about 60 kilometers away from Seoul. Let's take a look and maybe get some photos. It took me about one hour and a half on the metro in order to get here and the price of admission is about 20,000 won. Well, not about, but it is 20,000 won. So when you get to Dongjuchan Jeonggan Station, you must call a taxi because there are no taxis out there. And the only way that you can get here is by taxi. Uh, once you get here, it's pretty straightforward. You buy your ticket at the admission gate uh, by using your card. There is no cash permitted here and then you enter into the villa. Today I have with me my Sony a6400 with my go-to lens for travel photography um, when I'm going around Korea, which is my 90 millimeter macro. We're gonna try to get some nice shots around here in this traditional Japanese village and let you guys know exactly how this experience is. So maybe you'll want to come here one day as well. Let's go. Wow, this place is so picturesque. Like it's perfect for coming here on a date or just getting away into the countryside. Just look at it. It's amazing. And the leaves are starting to turn, so there's a lot of color here as well. This is money shot. This is thumbnail shot right here. Boom. 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 There we go. Okay, so far we've got some pretty good shots. I'm just scared because I, <laughs> I did something really dumb. I charged all of my batteries for my Sony ZV-1 and for my Sony RX. 100 Mark 7, and I was planning on doing all of the B-roll with the 100 Mark 7, and getting all of the vlogging or A-roll with the ZV-1. But guess what? I left all of the batteries except for two, which are the batteries in the cameras at home. So we're going to have to be very careful with uh, our battery usage and try to get all of the filming done as quickly as possible so we don't run out of battery. I love being out here in the countryside, especially on my own just to get away from the city. I can breathe. I can listen to the sounds of nature. Just be with me and my camera. Focus on my craft. Focus on my photography. And that's something that usually gets put to the wayside when I'm in Seoul because there's so much to do. I just tend to sometimes forget about my photography and I'll try to, you know, meet many people or make videos for YouTube. But even though making YouTube videos is something that I enjoy, it's not really my passion like strictly photography is. Walking upstairs. Photography is my passion, just strictly taking photos. So I guess what I'm gonna do from now on, as I said before, is I'm going to just combine all of my travel vlogs with photography uh, lessons and photo sharing. So I wanna share with you guys one tip that I learned uh, over the summer that will come in handy for all of you beginning photographers. And that's always to keep your camera out. So uh, while I was traveling in the countryside and even when I'm traveling in the city during doing my street photography, sometimes I miss a shot. And the reason why I missed a shot is because my camera is in my bag or my camera is not in a place that is accessible for me. So I've learned that it's always practical for a photographer to keep your camera with you if you don't keep the camera with you, you're going to miss amazing moments. There are so many life experiences that happen just as we're walking or just as we're sitting. Butterflies will pass, a ray of sunlight will hit the streets uh, or the ground in the perfect way, uh, or you will just get inspiration from being outside, being alone and just relaxing, but your camera is too far away. So 
that's one thing that I highly recommend for all photographers is to make sure that you keep your cameras in your hands. Don't put them away until you get home. Okay, the battery is about to die on this camera. So anyways, let's try out some of this food that we got. Uh, it looks like we've got some chicken with rice. And of course we got some, some sake. So first let's, let's give this sake a try. Not bad. I didn't know it was gonna be this kind of day. But yeah. Let's mix this up. Look at this. Mix this up. Mmm, <laughs> not bad. Mm, not bad at all. Mmm. Is this worth $22? I don't think it's worth $22, but we're paying for the experience, not for the, the taste of the food. The taste is pretty good, but no. Oh. Anyways, just be happy that you're traveling and that you're out and you're doing something fun. We don't complain about things that we don't need to complain about. Okay guys, it's almost time to go home. I've been here for a few hours and actually to be honest i don't want to leave it's just gorgeous here the atmosphere is wonderful this has probably been the best place that i've visited around korea this year and i've traveled to so many cities uh over the summer uh, you can come here you can wear kimonos uh, of course you have to rent them you can take awesome photos you can eat wonderful food you can drink wonderful drinks uh, there's a cafe here there's a souvenir shop here uh, there's just so much that you can do here and the scenery is just breathtaking okay guys so thanks for watching and i guess i'll see you in the next one remember always keep your camera out stay shooting stay creating see you next time peace probably wondering like Francois isn't it better to shoot in raw because you have more control over the colors yeah I guess but when I'm traveling I want to get the photos out very quickly so I'll always shoot in JPEG so I can send the photos to my smartphone or to my iPad very very quickly get them to the video or get them to Instagram so I can speed up my workflow